Hello, this is Ron St. Dennis with Acuity Solutions. First of all, I'd like to thank you for watching this video and thank you for visiting acuityinc.com. What I'd like to talk about today is basic solid modeling concepts in NX9. What you're seeing on the screen right now is a solid model of a uh, double clevis uh, that I've created previously. And I'm going to recreate this, or at least part of it, in a new part file. So we're going to create a new part, a metric part. And when you create a new part, you automatically get a datum CSYS to work with. So we're going to start with our first extrude on that datum CSYS. So we're going to pick this plane here, and it automatically defaults to profile. So we're just going to create a profile out here in space. And you'll see that uh, I have uh, display sk sketch constraints is on, so we always see them. And you'll notice that auto dimensioning is on. Uh, nice thing about auto dimensioning, auto dimensioning now is that you can just redimension and it knows the difference, NX knows the difference between what's auto dimension and what you dimension. So it will um, recreate or it will eliminate auto dimensioning uh, as you go along. So the first thing I notice is that this, uh, because of the way it was drawn, this, this radius is tangent with this line. I want a tangent up here also, so we're going to fix that right off the bat. So we're going uh, to select the arc. I'm going to make sure we get the arc and not the center. I'm going to select the line and it's going to give the option up here to make a tangent. All right. So then we're going to uh, oh the first thing, the other thing I want to do here is I want to create a line between the, uh, for positioning, I want to create a reference line between the center point of this, the midpoint of that, the line, and the, and the center of this arc. Uh, because this way I can get, uh, and we'll make that, a, we'll convert that to reference. And how you do that is you right click on the line, and uh, here you have the option to curve, convert to reference, or it's down here in the menu. So we'll convert that to reference. The next thing I want to do is constrain that horizontally. So we click on this line again, it gives you the, uh, when you hold it there long enough, it'll give you the option to pick uh, any other entities that are under that cursor. So we're going to just constrain that horizontally. And now I want to, I want to do some uh, dimensioning. So I'm going to go up here to rapid dimensioning. Now you notice that uh, when you hit this refresh button up here, it resets this dialog to the defaults. So I'm going to, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do a radial dimension. I want to put this radius in here. I'm going to make that 25. And you're going to, all right. And I'm going to make an inferred dimension. I'm going to make this 100. And you notice that the sketch takes off pretty good, so we'll just we'll just drag this back into view here. I'm going to continue dimensioning. I'm going to make an angular dimension. And this is going to be 75 degrees. Now. You can always get back normal to the sketch plane with this menu wheel. If you right click and hold it down, you'll see that right view to sketch. Okay, so um, these are the dimensions pretty much that I want. The one thing I want to do is I want to reposition this relative to the datum CSYS. So I'm going to pick. I want to pick this line. I'm going to pick this horizontal axis. I'm 
or the y-axis of the data. We're going to make these collinear. I'm going to pick this vertical line with that axis and make that collinear as well. So we can, uh, we'll just put these dimensions back so they're a little bit easier to read. And there you have it. So the key here is you need to look down here. On, uh, always keep uh, an eye on the status line because that uh, will tell you whether you're fully constrained or not. Uh, it's best to have everything that you make fully constrained and you'll, you'll figure that out soon enough uh, when you start modifying uh, solids and, uh, and assemblies especially in an assembly uh, situation. Uh, things will start to uh, look strange or break on you. So we're going to, uh, so you can, you can exit the sketch by either finish sketch up here, right click over here, and it's right here, either or. Now, now we're in the extrude dialog. And I'm going to do, you can start and end here at different values. The zero is, of course, the uh, sketch plane. And uh, this is going 30, uh, millimeters in one direction or we can make this a symmetric value and uh, make it uh, 30 millimeters so basically that's what we want it's 30 millimeters thick so here's uh, the beginning of our model here so now uh, if we go back and look at the uh, original you see we've we've done the basic outside of that now we're going to do the same thing on the other half we're going to create an extrusion on the same plane this time we're going to use a little different technique we're going to create a line we're going to start at this uh, oh, it's not exactly what I wanted we're going to create a line here at the mating line of that part. And then we're going to grab the midpoint of that line. And we're going to put a line up here. And we're going to... I want to make that a reference line. So now we have, uh, we'll create another line up here. Put another line down here. So this reference line is going to be between the center of this arc and the midpoint of that line because that's uh, one of the design criteria. We'll create a circle there. I know I'm jumping around a little bit here, but. Make that a radial. Twenty five millimeters. And I want an angular dimension between the vertical. This vertical line and our reference line and that's going to be 65 get back in the normal to the so all we need is two more lines here and a little trimming uh, but one of the other constraints that we have here is that this line the bottom of this clevis needs to be parallel with that Oop. parallel. So all we need is the two other lines here. And if you look, it shows that it's tangent. You can put it in tangent right there. Same thing here. In point. 
to tangent. And we know uh, we have a dimension for both of these lines. I want to clear this back to inferred. That's going to be 40. Well, that's interesting. All right, so I, uh, I got a line that got a little off base here uh, because if I, if I had dimensioned this reference line first, uh, I would, it would have been all right. So So that's pretty much what it should look like. We need to trim. Trim that out. And so we have our basic profile shape. Uh, remember, whenever you uh, have one of these little occurrences where things look a little strange, you can delete an entity and uh, go back and uh, redo it. And uh, you probably will at first. <clears throat> okay, so once again, we finish the sketch. So we're going to finish. And here we are again. I want to go symmetric as well. This one's a little bit fatter, so we're going to go 40. Okay, so now we have we have the basic profile of the part. So we're going to uh, we're going to do a subtract. We're going to do another extrude. We're going to go on this plane. And we're going to use the rectangle tool. Notice that everything's out of dimension, but we'll uh, get rid of those. Once again, I want a reference line here. Turn that to reference. And then uh, we can dimension this, put it in the third dimension here. And we want, uh, we want a dimension uh, so that we don't cut into this. We need to be dimensioned from here to here. And that'll be 20 millimeter. So now it says the sketch is fully uh, sketch is fully constrained with two auto dimensions. So uh, for and the reason is that uh, we haven't placed this in relation to our uh, datum thesis yet. So we're going to uh, we're going to pick this line and we're going to pick this axis and we're going to say collinear. So now we have one auto dimension left, and that would be the top of this. And we just want that to extend past there, so that's good. We can leave the auto dimension, or we can redimension that, whatever you uh, please. Got a little over constraint here, so. 
So it says the sketch is fully constrained with one auto dimension, and that's uh, that'll do it. So we're going to finish the sketch. And you'll see in the extrude dialog, you'll see that uh, you have a vector here. That's the vector that is extruded along, and it's going by values once again. And uh, under here, the body that it's going to, the boolean is going to be done to. And you'll notice over here, it's going to unite to this boolean. Well, that's not what we want. We want to subtract. So we're going to go here. I'm going to say subtract, and you'll see. So. Up here under limits, you can say symmetric value as well, and just go enough to get it out of both sides of the part. And you'll see that we have a solid model that we're going to extract or subtract from that original. So there you have it. <clears throat> so I'm going to uh, I'll do the same thing on the other side. Sometimes things get a little difficult to select. So I'm using basically the exact same uh, process that I did on the other side. Once again, the sketch is constrained with one auto dimension. We'll finish the sketch. We're going to have a symmetric value once again. This time we're going to go 40. We have to go uh, enough to get out of the solid model. And once again, it's prepared to subtract here. And there you have it. All right, so now uh, if you remember the original, uh, we'll save. If you, re or if you remember the original solid model, it's pocketed on both sides. So we're going to do another subtract extrude. We're going to create a ske sketch once again. A little mouse failure here. We're going to extrude it right on this plane, on this surface here. We're going to use <coughs> the drop down here. I'm going to use offset curve. So notice up here, if you if you notice up here, there's a, a filter. You can pick single curve, connected curve, tangent curves, and curves in group. We're going to pick connected curves because we want to get everything in this face. And you'll see that we did get an offset if it's on the wrong side, and you just flip it here. Oop. Gonna make it a lot smaller. and it automatically have flipped it. So it can be outside or inside the curve. We'll say OK to that. 
The only thing we need here is a couple of fillets because we don't we won't be able to machine that out. Fillets right here. Uh, I think we'll use a uh, five millimeter fillet. So, here you can see it's auto dimensioned. Oop. Shows our offset here. Shows our radius here. Sketch is fully constrained. Finish the sketch. Now it's going to want to, uh, we're going the wrong way. So, if you do that, it's going to go right to the part. So we want to go I'm going to go from zero, that's the plane that we sketched on, seven millimeters. And you'll see that that's our our tool solid is right there. We say OK. And there you have it. So now we're going to put a boss here in the surface that we just extracted. We're going to do create another sketch, this time just one arc. We're going to use this surface. And we're just going to create an arc circle. Right at the center of this. Going to dimension that. A radial dimension. And we're going to use uh, diametral. We're going to make that 20 millimeter. Sketch, sketch is fully constrained. Finish the sketch. Now this time we're going to say, we're going to go by value, zero, that's the sketch plane. But here we're going to go extend until extended. And we're going to pick the surface here. So that's going to be flush with the outer surface. Say OK. Oop, not good. Because we want to unite this, not subtract. So you got to keep track. You got to keep your eye on what's going on in here in the boolean, and the limits here. And of course, if you want to defer all of this uh, happening automatically, you can turn off the preview, and then you can uh, you can show the results when you want to see it and unshow them. So uh, if things start to get a little too too uh, difficult to follow, turn off the preview and then uh, go through it a step at a time. Okay, so there you have it. Now we could do basically the same thing on the other side and then we could mirror everything. Or we could, uh, let me finish up this half and then we'll, uh, we'll save that for another day. So uh, basically uh, what we want to do is we want to put in some edge blends. So we know that we, uh, we better keep these small because we know And all you got to do is pick the edges. Okay, once again, you have this uh, this filter up here. You can pick all in face, face edges, and that'll give you all the edges. But you'll see that they won't clean up in here. So if we go down to two, 
They will. Let's let's do that again. We're going to do an edge blend. This time we're going to pick, uh, we'll pick uh, connected curves. And it won't fit that either. So let's, uh, this is a good time to uh, show you how to back up. And uh, so if you, get a, if you get into one of these scenarios where you want to go back and fix something, if you right click on any one of these features and you say in the history tree and you say edit with rollback, It'll put you back there, and we can re-edit the sketch by hitting the sketch once again. And we'll just make this a little bit smaller. Finish the sketch. Say OK to the extrude. And then when we put a, an edge blend in here, we'll make them two millimeters. We'll select the face edges. And there it is. So, since we, we've only been working on one side of this, if we want to finish this solid in a, because it is symmetric, we can just mirror what we've done on this side to the other side. And that's what we'll do now. Mirror features. You got to select the features you want to mirror. Oop. If you get a feature you don't want, you hold the shift. Oop, let's start over. A much simpler way to do this is to pick, hold down the control key and pick the three that you want here. And then go up here, pick mirror feature. It's asking for plane here. Say select plane. And there you have it. And of course you can go and uh, fill out the rest of these, uh, all, all the rest of these uh, edges and uh, finish up the other side. So uh, I think I've taken up enough of your time for now. Uh, I enjoyed it. I hope you did too. I hope you uh, you learned a little something. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please uh, please feel free to uh, email me at ron at acuityinc.com. Thank you.